the amount of loss from ransomware is on the rise again. And this was something that we saw decline back in 2022. As it turns out, that 2022 decline was probably more of an anomaly and not necessarily a trend. Ransomware payments for the very first time in 2023 exceeded $1 billion. And remember, that's just the ones that we know about. And this is about double what we saw in, uh, in 2022. What I find really interesting about this is not necessarily the amount of ransom that was paid because we've seen ransom on a steady you know, increase over the last five, six years. It's the amount per ransom that's being paid. And so this is a chart we pulled back from Chainalysis. And this is showing the distribution between ransom payments that were a million dollars or more versus all other payments. And you see a big discrepancy between those. A vast majority of the ransom payments that are tracked as actual ransom payments by groups who do that kind of work are now exceeding $1 million in value. And this is why we've seen this massive increase in the overall numbers. The number of attacks have actually decreased, but the, the amount of loss has gone up exponentially. One of the things that is fueling this kind of this kind of increase in uh, activity is the use of artificial intelligence. And we've talked in a couple of our other webinars about how AI is kind of fueling criminal enterprise at this point. This has made things a lot easier for hackers. You don't necessarily have to be an expert in cybercrime to pull off an attack like this now because there are lots of there are lots of tools out there to assist you and make things just easier on you in general. We now have the ability to do voice cloning. We can do very, very convincing deep fakes, which I'm sure most of you have seen, if not just on social media, then you know elsewhere. News stories about them are very prevalent at this point. But we also have hacker developed LLM. So think ChatGPT, this amazingly useful artificial intelligence service, but with no safety precautions whatsoever in place. You can ask it for pretty much anything and it will likely have an answer for you. Now this is a trend and we bring this up for a very, very specific reason. A lot of attackers are moving away from the more standard means of phishing. We need to be on our toes as defenders to make sure that we're, uh, we're accounting for these changes in tactics. One of the big ways we can do this, again, comes down to our user base. We wanna make sure that we are conducting cybersecurity awareness training for all of our employees. Regardless of the fact that we have new and more advanced styles of phishing, it's still phishing. And if we train our users appropriately, they can act as a very, very good first line of defense against these kind of inclusion or intrusion. So again, make sure you're doing on-demand awareness videos, email reminders, and phishing simulations. Just this by itself, According to IBM's cost of a data breach report, can save you over $230,000 off the cost of a data breach if you are unlucky enough to, uh, to suffer one. Best case scenario though, your users catch the phishing email ahead of time and you don't suffer it in the first place. If you want to get a little bit more in depth about what we're, what we're doing here today or how we respond to ransomware attacks like this, we actually have a brand new on-demand class. I'm super excited about this. We have a brand new on-demand class that we just launched and here we have a $100 discount for, uh, for recipients of the webinar. This is going to be valid through June 1st. Scan the QR code, check out lmgsecurity.com slash ransomware class, and, uh, and go ahead and sign up. Again, very, very proud of this. It's one of our most popular classes. It's one of my favorite ones to teach, and now it is fully on demand. You don't even have to sit and listen to me talk live. You can take it at your own pace. You can go through all the labs and learn exactly how we go about doing these things. I mentioned before that we, we want to get away from using malware, and this is a, another one of those trends that we really wanted to talk about. The prevalence of malware-free malicious activity on networks is skyrocketing at this point. The information you see here on the screen comes from CrowdStrike. They estimate that about 75% of the malicious activity they see during their investigations is malware-free. They're just using the tools that you already have on your computer system in order to, to complete some malicious actions against you. We can get another example of this by looking at the Black Cat or Alpha V MITRE attack mapping. That's what you see on the right hand side here. We can see their initial access oftentimes comes from exploiting public facing applications or going after valid domain accounts. We can see them going after Windows Command Shell for their execution. It's not until we hit the second to the last part of this attack map where we see where malware actually comes in in a lot of cases. And that's when the encryption actually happens. This is the, the ransomware itself actually running. This is a readout from the CrowdStrike 2024 Global Threat Report, and they're talking about a big increase in what they call cloud conscious attacks. This means that attackers break into a network and understand that they also have broken into a cloud system as well. Between 2022 and 2023, we saw a 75% increase in these kind of attacks, and it is becoming commonplace that attackers will, uh, will, will go directly after your cloud resources after they gain that foothold.
what did we uh, what did we normally say, Sherry? Uh, ransomware and business email compromise go together like peanut butter and jelly. Watch your email because if you have ransomware, chances are very good they have your email. I also want to note, uh, you know, when we've gone through the Uber attack, you could see right away the hackers went after Slack. They went after AWS. They went after everything. They expect that you have a robust cloud environment and they will go after it. And um, one question we've gotten a lot lately is, you know, how do I do a pen test if I don't have anything other than the cloud? Or, you know, how, what are hackers going to target if I don't have an internal network? Because so many organizations, especially SMBs, are really primarily or sometimes even solely in the cloud. And hackers are aware of that. I, I think everyone could kind of guess where we were going with the suggestion after this one. But uh, one, of the, one of the big things that you need to have in place, make sure you have uh, in place in your cloud systems, strong phishing resistant multi-factor authentication. Remember, multi or authentication is based on three things, something you know, something you have, and something you are. And until we hit that magical passwordless future, oftentimes this is going to come down to a password and something like a multi-factor authentication key. Or if you're, uh, if you're not doing it quite correctly, just a password. So uh, keep that in mind. This is also something that you can identify with a cloud configuration review. And these are huge. Love that you included phishing resistant because remember, hackers are targeting your one-time codes and we're seeing them getting stolen more and more often either because of fake websites or social engineering over the phone or over email. Um, so it is no longer best practice to be using one-time codes, and we should all be planning to move away from them to stronger things like pass keys or hardware tokens. No, that's a, that's a great point. And it, it's especially relevant here because we, when we talked about the features of that, that remote access piece of malware that we used, one of those was a keylogger. And that keylogger is going to be able to intercept those MFA codes if you're, if you're manually typing them into your, uh, your computer system. The reason we talk about this in, in terms of your cloud, though, is that you really want to take a look at your entire cloud system. The, the security best practices behind cloud systems change at lightning speed. So it's really beneficial to you and your organization to have a trained professional get in there, take a look, make sure that you are up to par on your security settings, make sure there's no glaring security holes. Uh, honestly, this can, uh, this can be a lifesaver when it comes down to stopping your network from being uh, hit with a significant data breach just based on the fact that your cloud wasn't set up correctly. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, this is Sherry Davidoff, CEO of LMG Security. And I'm Matt Duran, Director of Training and Research for LMG Security. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time. We would love to hear from you. You can reach us at info at lmgsecurity.com, find us on LinkedIn, or follow us on Twitter. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time.